Good evening, Ocean State Church family. So glad to have you back here for our third installment. This is our third week of our Marriage Mondays, where we know every day is a great opportunity to work on our marriages, but specifically on Mondays, we're trying to bring together a truth like this where we can you know, work on our marriages together in a certain aspect. Uh, quick review of what we've talked about over the past couple of weeks. And if you, ha if I'm telling you right now, if you haven't seen the other videos, you're gonna wanna watch the other videos as well, just to catch up to where we are at this point. Uh, the first week we talked about seeking God together. I encouraged you guys all as couples to pray together, to find time during the day, um, whether it be in the morning or at night, to just come together in prayer, um, praying not only for each other, but for the day, just but for your relationship in general, to bring it together, you know, together to pray. Um, we talked last week about fighting fair. Fighting fair, meaning, you know, as couples, we're all going to fight. All couples are going to fight. The question is, are we fighting fair? And we're fighting to what? Bring our marriages together, to restore our marriages, to fight for resolution together, um, not to fight to win. So we're not fighting to win, we're fighting for resolution. And we, we talked about you know making a set of rules of engagement for yourselves as couples so that when you do fight, um, you know, you're heading down the right direction when you do fight. Because we know all couples are gonna fight, but we wanna make sure that we're fighting fair. Mm -hmm. So today, we're getting into a new bit of content here. Today we wanna talk about having fun. fun. Having fun, having fun is such a priority in a marriage and you have to set it as a priority because we know, you know, especially now with life getting kind of crazy and hectic, even though it's kind of slowed down a bit, we're all been forced to slow down, life can get out of control even in the slowness to where we are not making it a priority to have fun. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, we handle our lives and we, and we work, you know, day by day in a, almost a survival mode where through. we got to get through it, right? We try to just get it done and we try to, you know, schedule our day. And what can happen, and this is what gets dangerous, is, is your marriage can almost become a business type relationship. Um, you know, fun doesn't become, you know, a part of it anymore. And we have to understand that fun in a marriage is a luxury. It's not, it's not you know, something that it's we can just throw in. It's a requirement. You've got to have fun in your marriages. Mm -hmm. So what are we going to look at today? So there's three types of fun that we're going to be talking about today. The first type is face-to-face -face fun. Face-to-face -face fun. This includes times just like this of intimacy um, with ongoing conversation. And this is conversation that involves details and specifics. Mm -hmm. What we want to avoid as our face-to-face -face fun is the conversations that involve, you know, setting schedules and who's doing what and, you know, like working through the day-by-day, -day, like, grind of stuff that has to happen. Mm -hmm. That does not count as face-to-face -face fun. That does not count as that. Um, we want to, we want to, you know, beware of getting down the road of that's all that we talk about where it's the, you know, the logistics of day to day life. Um, and we really have to have, you know, a way of guarding that. Cause if we don't guard it, I'm telling you right now, and I know Stacy will agree, life will squeeze, listen, life will squeeze the intimacy out of our face to face fun. Mm -hmm. So face to face fun truly does start up, you know, with. Just having good conversation so together. So something I had done in the past too, like I'm not creative by any means, but if you give me something, I can duplicate it pretty well. Um, so there was a dating site, it was called the Dating Divas that I had gotten, and it was pretty much um, different countries you would visit with your husband. So you would go out, you would shop for the meal together, you would mm. cook together, and then there was something themed from whatever country you were visiting at the time, which is perfect as we're in quarantine right now. you know. But that was, that was great for us to have the face-to-face -face time. Absolutely. You know? And you've got to be creative like that. You've you got to innovate. To. You've mm -hmm. got to set a specific date night. Mm -hmm. And don't think it has to cost a ton of money. Mm -mm. It does not. And that's one of the things we think, oh, well, I'll never be able to get out. The like, kids are always home. Set time. Set time together. Prioritize it and make it mm -hmm. special. It doesn't have to cost a lot of money. It's more about the time together and the sharing, you know, the thoughts, um, the intimate conversations about the day, things like that. Because face-to-face time um, is important. And, and like I said, life will squeeze the intimacy out of that if you let it where we just get driven to the business side of who's doing what and the chores mm -hmm. and schedule timelines and putting kids to bed that'll squeeze the, the intimacy right out of that face-to-face -face fun so that is important that's the first thing face-to-face -face fun yes second thing the second thing is side to side fun side to side you know, we fun. we really want to discover things that we enjoy doing together or things about right. one another yes we're going to discover and engage activities that our spouses love um, and these or can be, don't even love. or don't even necessarily love, but just, you know, have, have fun to together. Do. Yes. Um, this doesn't have to be extravagant either. Mm -hmm. They can be special things. They can be ordinary moments. You know, for us, one of the ways that we connect in this way, um, especially even in this time now is, 
You know, our kids are now finally old enough to stay home alone. It's like a, it's like a totally different world. For a little bit of time. Little bits of time. Yeah, we're not leaving our kids, you know, unattended for you know long bits of time. Yeah. But small bits of time now, they're old enough to be able to do that, and that has changed our dynamic. Where you know, Stacy used to do the grocery shopping pretty much on her own. Now I just go with her and it's side to side time. It's literally side to side time in the grocery store where we're having some of that face to face time as well. But the side to side where we're side to side where we're shopping together, you know, she doesn't necessarily enjoy grocery shopping, but it's something that she does on a regular basis. Now that I go with her, we spend time together side to side. Absolutely. And another way I got creative before too was for Derek's birthday last year. Like he loves disc golf. I hate it. Mm. I'm terrible at it, <laughs> but I love him. So I took them on a whole camping retreat, and that's what we did all weekend. Is we did disc golf, or we even take the family sometimes. Yeah, you know? yeah, it so. can be it can be times like that that you schedule. Doesn't have to cost a ton of money. Yeah. It's about being intentional about what you do. Um, we've even done projects around the home yeah. that we both have wanted to get done, and said, you know what, let's do it together. And she'll even even if it's just her spending time in the garage with me while I'm cutting the wood and doing the things we paint together. Yeah. Those are side by side things that you can do. It doesn't Find have to hobbies. be. I mean, we used to four wheel together. Yeah, you know, hobbies, so. any type of thing that you can find together. And you know, you, maybe you're saying, ladies, well, my husband, you know, he doesn't like to do anything and he doesn't really like to talk to me. I'm telling you right now, ladies, if you can find something that your husband likes, yeah. there is no better way to engage in conversation than than jumping into one of his hobbies. And you don't have to love it. You know, no. he's not going to expect you to love it, but the fact that you're putting interest in it, it'll get conversation started. And you know, as, as a man, it's, it's more likely for him to open up and engage Absolutely. in more serious conversation. So mm -hmm. great ways to engage conversation. Um, and really we want to be, you know, through all this, we want to be developing, you know, aspects of romance in all areas of our life. It's yes. not just about, you know, the physical intimacy part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to use all of these times to develop, you know, the intimacy and in, in romance in our lives. So that leads us to the third type of fun. Which is belly button to belly button. Belly button to belly button fun. That's a great one. Mm -hmm. um, we know God gives us the gift as married couples and we're going to we're going to kind of keep this PG, you know, because of the nature of this going out online. Yeah. But God gives us the gift of physical intimacy as a couple and we know that it is super super important. Mm -hmm. You know, physical intimacy really can be a great gauge um, on how the process that we, you know, relate together and, and are growing together because you know, it really is generally either good or bad depending on how healthy our relationship is. It can really be a great gauge. Now, a lot of times we jump right into this third one and say, you know, well, you know, my spouse really isn't interested. They really don't care about this. Well, these are these three things. Please understand. These all go hand in They're hand. Like building blocks. They're building blocks. You know, if 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 the first and second type of fun are non-existent in your relationship, there's a really good chance that the third one is non-existent as well. All right. <laughs> But when the other two are good and they're growing and they're thriving and, and you know, you're working on them and things are getting better. That third one comes naturally. That third one flourishes. It does. It comes naturally. It starts to flourish. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, it's, it's really, really a good thing for you to work on this together, especially in this time now when we're kind of all home. All three of these areas are important. You know, and romance can flow from the other two, from the other two areas into this third one. Mm -hmm. You know, be creative. Have fun with this. Mm -hmm. You know, men... Be creative in your in your approach. You know, men are like just like, hey, baby, you into it? You ready? You know, it, be smart, be wise, be romantic, be loving, be kind. You know, use your face to face time. Have your side to side time. It's a nat it's a natural outpouring, is what we're saying. And ladies, just make an approach. It doesn't have to be crazy. <laughs> just just put you know a little bit of interest into it. You know, make an approach. That's right. Guys are so easy. Right? Any type of approach. You make any approach, and it's usually a good thing, and it's fun, and it's creative, and it gets you guys laughing, and it really is a good thing. And we see these three areas how they build together. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the great scriptures on this, and I'm not going to read all of this, but you'll see this pattern that we just kind of discussed come out. I want you guys as a couple, and this is not necessarily the challenge this week, but I want you as a couple to read Song of Solomon chapter 7. And you've probably seen or read this before, but Solomon literally goes through um, this picture of his bride describing her, and he describes her from, from, from her feet all the way up to her head. And it's great, the, the, the language that's used here, you know, he describes her stomach as like, you know, a great mound of wheat, which at that time, hey, that was awesome, right? That was a great thing. Her neck, you know, was like an, uh, a, an ivory, ivory tower. tower. Her nose was like, you know, the Tower of Lebanon. It's crazy, crazy verbiage here. But the reality is, you see him work from that, describing her and how much he loved her. We really see the face-to-face -face in this, how, mm -hmm. you know, it's all about these loving and kind words to build each other up and to, 
you know, you know, bring each other up in this and, 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 and use that face-to-face time. We see them then talking about, you know, going to the fields and going out to the parks and, and spending the night together out in the flowers and like taking the side to side into account here, you know, going and finding a place. And we ultimately see it, you know, bring them down to where she says, there, I'll give you my love where it's, it's, it's like she planned this escape for them. And we see a progress of this pattern. So I would encourage you as a couple to read, read Song of Solomon chapter 7. It's like 13 or 14 verses, 13 verses, I think. Um, and I'm telling you, it'll encourage you. It'll, it'll, it'll give you some insight onto, you know, this picture of how he loved his, his wife and how they interacted with each other. Um, but one thing that, you know, we do want to challenge you, and I think I'm going to let you give out the challenge. What's our challenge this yeah, so week? We, we just challenge this week to bring the fun back to your marriage, you know, plan right. a date. Just set some time apart. Maybe it has to be after the kids go to bed, whatever it may be. Just plan that time together, you know, to have the face-to-face, to have the side-to-side, and that will eventually lead to the belly button to belly button. Right. We want, we want our marriages to flourish, so we want to bring fun back into our marriages, and we want to bring those three types of fun back into our marriages. Remember this. That what we invest in flourishes. Mm-hmm. So invest in the marriage that you have. You know, if you're thinking, well, you know, my marriage is just not that good anymore. And grass always, grass always seems greener somewhere else, right? I'm telling you right now, that means it's time to water your own yard. Yes. All right, water your own yard. When you water your own yard, it will get green and it will flourish. And it may take some time. Right. And there may be roadblocks and stumbling blocks that you've got to tear down now as you work through, you know, fighting fair and, and you're getting that communication going back on but when you bring this aspect of fun back in it really will change the way uh, you know your marriage operates because here's the reality you got married when you did for a reason right. right you were in love you loved each other things were great you know you didn't you weren't just you know tolerant of each other and said you know what Let's get hitched. We'll just make this thing work. No, you were in love. You wrote cards to each other. You, you know, expressed interest. You, you played dates. One another. You studied one another. Yeah. Right. And and there's a great quote. Um, you know, Craig Rochelle says he says, "If you want what you if you want what you once had, do what you once did." Mm-hmm. At one point, it was good. It was great. You invested. You put the time in. If you want what you once had, do what you once did. Mm-hmm. So that said. That is our challenge this week. You know, plan a little date together. Find some time to have that fun. Work on all three types of fun in your marriages. Um, and, and go forward and invest in your marriage. Because I'm telling you right now, it is worth it. And it can get better. And things will be good. And uh, you can work on your marriages during this time. So we love you guys. We want to pray. We're going to close out in prayer. Um, and then we will move on with our week. Lord God, uh, we are so thankful to be able to come together like this. To be able to use technology to be able to get into your word a little bit, to share some truths about, about our marriages, Lord. I just pray that you would allow us, especially during this time, to understand the importance of having fun in a relationship, in a marriage like this. That this is not just some luxury, but that this is a necessity. We've got to have fun. We've got to prioritize. We've got to, we've got to schedule time for each other. Lord, I pray that you would allow us to work on all three areas of fun in our, in our marriages this week that you would allow our marriages to honor you, that we would invest in the marriage that you've given us as the gift that it is that you've given us, Lord. We are so thankful once again for this time together. I just pray that you would bless our week and bless our marriages going forward. We're so thankful again for the great God you are. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Great seeing you guys again. Have a great week. Strengthen those marriages.